I decided I would just do song lyrics today. Because <laughs> I don't generally, I will, I guess I'm going to do lyrics that I've, that maybe started as prose and I either sculpted or squeezed into verse. But I would, I'm going to start with a, a, a little poem that I, you know, in, in the show, the Broadway shows in Great Comet, we used to hand out little love letters at the beginning of the second act to audience members. So I wrote a little poem <laughs> that I would always write. I, mean, I had a poem I would write in those. So I'm just going to open with that. You, my love, are more than a comet. You are the truth that visions defy. You are Adonis radiating long after beauty dies. So that's my little opening poem. Mm. And here's a song that I wrote about the eclipse that happened, uh, the solar eclipse, when I was feeling a little paranoid for some reason. All right. This is called Rainy Day. There is a funny kind of blue this September morning. I do not know if you have viewed it. It is alarming. Don't forget to write to mom. Tell her that I miss her. There's a shadow on the lawn. Trouble coming, sister. Rainy day, keep it up. Drunk all day, it's not enough. Rainy day, keep it up. Drunk all day, it's not enough. Here come the chicken-suited men in rare condition. The sidewalk sizzles like a pan. I flip and kiss them. I hang their picture on my wall. I want them to shut up now. I'm going to kick them in the balls if they keep it up now. Rainy day, keep it up. Drunk all day, it's not enough. Rainy day, keep it up. Drunk all day, it's not enough. So that's rainy day. I have a whole bunch, so I'm just going to kind of read through. All right, this one, this is I wrote in Israel when Doug and I were there about two years ago, and I, I haven't actually turned this one into a song yet, but maybe I will. Drained and framed, scoop, scoop, he scoped and came. Blessed are the tones of the vibe and the cats in the alley whose tongues are tied. Meet me for a while, meet me, we're on a, ro we're on a ride. Meet me for a while with crown and camera smile. All right, this next one, it was just a, this was definitely a lot of just random shit I was jotting down when I was watching like a science show, <laughs> so it's a little nature and technology. All right. I would like to appeal to you. Please just tell me what to do. Got this desire to conform. I've got amnesia in the morning. Don't know where I've been or where I'm going. From my window on the train, all the cities look the same. Where are the physical copies? When did it all turn to ether? What's left to hold on to? Just the wisp of a breeze. Losing all my data. All artistic media are other forms of nature. Heat changing matter, shifting the properties, killing life. There's a great big factory at the bottom of the sea. All of our inventions there, all of our dependence there. We were leaders in our dreams. We sailed as the sun drew up. Once upon a time, we were looking out. Now we want to dive in for the answers, forms that confuse us. Computers to replace the sun. Monsters need no sun. From my window on the train, all the cities look the same. We were leaders in our dreams. All right, let's see what else. Narrative life. This is for my album, Jill Time. I'll skip. I was going to do the, well, do we have more people joining us? It's all right if I keep going for a few? All right. Uh, all right. So this is a, this song I constructed as like there's a spoken word intro and it goes into song. So I'm just going to include both parts. I created interior worlds, rooms with many views. I drew a frying pan with an egg in it. I erased the egg and drew sausages, an endless narrative within a flat, stagnant frame. This was the smallest scope holding my attention, but my heart was so big. I am in a real world, a world with shifting views. I rifle through cabinets to discover my Morton salt shaker has run out, to discover 18 months of my life can be measured by the volume of a cylinder. This is the big picture holding my attention, and my heart is so big it might explode. What is life without a narrative? Just a series of imperatives? What is art without a narrative? What is the heart but a beating imperative? Life pulses under dim light, steady, steady steps at my tail. Inside me there's muscle pumping its chest. I'll kick your ass to the curb, it says. This is the big picture, the pulse. 
but my heart is growing numb. Where's youth for the old? There's too much youth for the young. I'm joining the parade. Beep, beat again. Beep, beat again. Life is all the same. Beep, beat again. It's all the same. Staring at your reflection in the mirror, seeing something you hold dear, but it's hard to look at it because you start to see the wear. But you like it too because you're a little refined and you didn't even have to try. Life just happened, the narrative life driving tracks across your face, giving life's journey not time but depth and space. I've got no tales to tell. It's all imprinted on my skin. No ideologies to sell. My truth is pulsing from within. I'm joining the parade. Beep, beat again. Beep, beat again. I'm joining the parade. Beep, beat again. I'm joining the parade. Beep, beat again. I'm joining the parade. Beep, beat again. All right, this is, isn't it typical? This was a diary entry, so this is the version of prose squeezed into verse. I am content, but on the edge. I'm so excited, but what for? Told someone the other day that I felt my constant state of happiness was a fleeting one. I was drunk. Not sure I really believed it. Well, I did, but I guess not my wording of it, or the fact that I was putting the feeling into words at all was overstating it. Let me get over myself already. It fades away. The seasons change. Blue to gray. It fades away. This ugly journal that I hold so dear, with so many romanticized entries, so much dreaming, so much longing, so much lust, I'll never change. I may seem more practical, no, not practical, self-critical. I'm not really, I just have to keep myself in check from time to time. Blue to gray, beauty fades away, the seasons change. Blue to gray, beauty fades away, the seasons change. Blue to gray. Ils n'ont pas l'air de croire à leur bonheur. They don't seem to believe in their own happiness. That's me. I don't quite believe it, because obviously there should be something more at the core, not this superficial shit which gives me an ongoing excited contentment, a potentially destructible one, the essence of which is manifested in my subtle uneasiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ils n'ont pas l'air de croire à leur bonheur. It fades away. All right, I think I got just two more. All right, this is Underbelly. Woke up with the pain, Underbelly digesting ugly people of the night. They ruined my thing, stretched out the bellows because I didn't do them a favor. And that pain was injustice. It fumed from the belly up. I was choking on my breath. But I sat up in bed, straightened my spine, gulped on my liquids, and I was on my merry way, lit by embers of the Underbelly. Then it's late at night. I'm alone on my couch, nothing left to digest. I'm running on empty, craving a feeling, so I fill my belly up with oil. But the emptiness is isolation. The oil coats my belly, but it's no replacement for a friend. So I stand up straight, walk out the door with a smile, and the faith that someone will come and greet me. And I'm on my merry way, lit by embers of the underbelly. All right, last one. So this one actually I made into I mean, the way I recorded it is kind of a rap, we'll say. <laughs> and this is about having us uh, when I was recovering from a stress fracture. I have a fault line, too much impact to the stem. Have to slow down and sway. Amen. Who is she? Hi, we're too sweet. Ah, a band. That's neat. Yeah, we're a band vibrating in a box. The players are natural. O is like an astronaut. I am me and I am too sweet. Twice I had a dream, once twice sold. I approached the equator surrounded by gold. My liquid subsided, combustion cells rise. I heard they got A, D was robbed in disguise. Disguise. Remember how I picked it up, a frothy cup in hand? Handled that coquetta, then I handled my man. Now I'm mean and coquetta's confused. She was free at camp, perhaps misused. I'm re-examining her with my P.O. We find pleasure in rituals like going to the Duomo, singing in harmony, connecting with the public. We find it outside of our sperm egg republic. Mama didn't push. She preferred to seize. I would stab from the waltzes and hug my knees. When I met my P.O., I finally said hello and farewell to the art house. Mama knows when it's time to get out. I know when it's time to get out of line. I find ghosts like my dad unconscious on the highway. That's okay. I sway. I made it to the diamond play. Soon I'll go to Paris, put on airs like a ruski, say farewell to ADs, P and C. My P.O. and I will wrestle to be to impact the fault line to one of us screams. Thinking on filthy L.B. and dad. Farewell, melancholy. Hello, bad. That's it. <laughs> hey. Awesome. Next. 
Rose, Adam. I'll go. Oh, okay. um, I have a question. If I, um, just a, a low tech question. If I click away from the screen, can you still see me? I think so. so. You can still, yes. see me. still see you. All right, amazing. Then I will use this screen. Um, it's really nice to. Um, okay. It, I was really happy to be asked to read some poems. This is actually the um, the second time that this week that um, uh, somebody's asked me to uh, do a Zoom meeting in my early iteration as a poet, which is really interesting um, because I've um, mostly done um, uh, songs for a long time. Um, but it looks like um, my poems are even more intense than my songs, so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. Um, all right, so let's see. And I have one more thing that I wanna um, look up here, which is, um, I think I'm gonna share an unfinished, somewhat unfinished song with you guys, which I might sing um, acapella, we'll see. Okay. So um, the first one is called um, All About Christian Women. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. I scrawled an adolescent Eden in a spiral notebook with my youth pastor's pen. He had a soft beard and a softer t-shirt and a cornfield in October with a blackbird sky. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. The vessel is pure, the vessel is holy, and the Song of Songs, a flash flow in Nebraska. The denomination is rethinking women in leadership. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I come to the altar, but the music has changed. They cover my belly with their little blue blankets. With the body of Christ can see it's too late. The worshippers pick from a pile of stones. Holy justice is quenched. Waters above, earth below, when the last of my family can't remember my name. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Mother, am I an infidel? You're the one who turns your back. Your basket of bloodthirsty whispers seduced my family as you walked past. Mother, am I a witch? Your rumors formed a devil out of clay. You charged me with Lucifer's pride. Was it God or his angels who directed you to testify? Mother, am I defiled? You lift up a filthy knife. You said to the judge, my daughter is a whore. The judge took my baby when I wouldn't bow my head. Now you teach my daughter all about Christian women, the pure ones like a ruby and the dirty like a flame. Mother, I am a speck in an orphan's blue eye. You lift up a two by four and sound the battle cry. Let's see. This is called the service. Let grief come in. I'm afraid. I hid from grief, but grief could wait and wait. So come, metal fingers, sweep all the way through, all the way deep across the whole room. Finish your work and leave me diffuse. It's no use. I can't hold anymore. This trembling field can't hold the door. Come in, grief. Bring your rake. How many passes can I take? This is called Mother's Day. You stabbed me in the heart and plugged the hole with a carnation.
This is called Hollywood Goddamn. Power, power, how could you do me this way? The answer is power, power. Why is it taking my breath away? Power, don't you talk back to me. You talk back to me. Nina Simone wanted you to know when the school door closed because of old Jim Crow. That was a door that could never be unclosed and it was never gonna be okay. Power, power, what have you taken away from me? Power, it was my power, it was my power, that's why it feels this way. Don't you dare say a word, don't you dare say a word. Asia Argento said, Avi, no, no, no. He ate her up like a monster, like a big bad wolf. Hollywood, goddamn, but get on with the show. In the movie, she would get away. Power, power, how do you keep me afraid? The answer is power, power, how do I make you afraid? The answer is words. Don't you talk back to me, don't you talk back to me don't you dare say a word don't you dare say when the goddamn president of the united states grabbed his wife in 1988 ripped out fistfuls of the hair on her head she said he ripped off her clothes and shoved her onto the bed and shoved his penis in her body in a violent way. The word for that event is rape. Power, power, how is it taken away? The answer is silence. Maybe I'll do a song. Um, since we have another presidential song. Um, interesting, actually, right after the 2016 election, I knew I was going to write a song with that chorus and also knew I was going to write a song called Heaven is a Wall. And it took a while for it to, uh, to drop into my head uh, completely. But this is the song, and um, uh, I guess I can just introduce it by saying I remember Trump's campaign really reminded me there was a really great article about um, its comparison to what's known as the prosperity gospel um, uh, which is kind of just what it sounds like uh, and I just thought so much about um, how um, upset I get when I hear you know sort of um, like worship songs or whatever as, as a fundamentalist refugee. Um, but uh, if I hear like, um, you know, an African-American music song about heaven, um, it's just so different. And, um, you know, Trump, when he talked about his wall, I just kept getting these flashbacks to um, the floor plans for heaven from the book of Revelation. And I knew I wanted to write a song about that. Um, and, you know, sure enough, I mean, it's just a really different vision when you um, think about leaving this place and going to another planet where your enemies do not exist. If you're the oppressor versus if you're the oppressed, you know, I find, you know, this idea really moving that you would go to another planet, you know, with, you know, um, for instance, no white people on it, whereas opposed to like, I have to get away because these people aren't serving me properly. <laughs> so that's maybe a little more background than I usually give in a concert, but um, uh, anyways. Um, so the, the first line is, is a quote from a, a Trump uh, speech. Heaven is a wall, impenetrable. 
physical tall, a powerful, beautiful porter. The liars are on one side, and the good folks are on the other. The angel talked with me at a measuring rod of gold. was sorry um the wall was 1900 miles long 144 cubits thick built of solid jasper city of gold as pure as glass first they raised the sea then they got rid of the moon so the sun could shine all night and everyone was white where the sea had been they built a lake of fire where everyone they didn't like to learn a second way to die heaven is a dream a fantasy for people like you who don't have to look at people like me but who will bear your children and who will sweep those golden streets? The angel of seven bulls and the wall was built of precious stone. First foundation was jasper, sapphire, topaz, and the rope. Jason threw beyond us. Each gate was made of a single pearl. Gates never had to close because no bad folks were left to even try to come in. They were all in the lake of fire. And everything was golden. Nothing green was growing. No one was making babies. The good folks had the place to themselves. The good folks had the place to themselves. No more foreign idols. No immoral women. No filthy unbelievers. None who practiced magic. Heaven is a wall, impenetrable, physical tall, terrible, powerful porter. Um, okay, I think that's it for me. Tom, does that mean I've drawn the long straw? I can't hear anybody else. Oh, Tom, you're muted. Ah, I said I may fill in the rest after after you're done, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. okay. <clears throat> so. Oops. Sorry. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. You won't silence me, Tom. I won't. Okay, so I will do the rose method and uh, look straight at my screen, which from my vantage point has a poem up between myself and the screen and the um, Zoom. But anyway, so as all the Irish know, uh, St. Brendan uh, made it uh, to the Americas following an ice shelf uh, in the sixth century AD. Uh, and this is how I remember it. It's called Common Sense. I'm pretty sure there was a granite mountain range where Boston stands today, which St. Brendan's crew lost ashore off the last, after the last lighthouse had closed, stopped in at until morning carved in place, chiseling out the stone balconies and pointed spires of the gray high rise battlements we still can see, following the winding tangling trails to set the streets wherever the rock giants cared to curve. The later pilgrims used the scrap as bricks for their low cottages and docks and paths of cobblestone, which actually came second to the towers until the settlers figured out a use for all the rest. The crew, festive at finding a new world and drunk already, carved the whole town in one night and left a labyrinth of casks beneath the streets, whose seas of whiskey light the lamps along the all-night avenues and guide the still unfinished revels gently to this day, which isn't really possible 
but the saint believed it when he lit them. That's what counts. And sticking with holy men or their effigies for a moment, a brief observation from the one time I was ever in Italy. It's called Street Island, Arezzo. The pillared plaza pigeon doesn't know he's standing square on some once loved Pope's head or that he's the center of attention. The long lost Pope set in stone doesn't know he's underfoot or that his cap is one curve of the world. And staying with town squares, but, and their monuments, uh, albeit in Pennsylvania rather than Italy this time, this one is called Cornerstone. The slim concrete monolith, forgotten soldiers carved in its trunk on a tiny triangular traffic island between the sagging shacky row houses near the spacey concrete 50s church, intersections overgrown and side streets wound around it. The only thing they couldn't knock down, once the center of town, now just too in the way to bother an eternal sunlight of security beacon wired to the top so no one gets mugged or crashes their car or forgets our fallen. Palimpsest crowds collect an echo around the pedestal, like moss to that one light, hang at the center of their neighborhood's proudest day. Traffic can't stop them. They pay their respects. They wonder why we're so unhappy. Um, I set myself a rule. Uh, never to uh, title poems uh, in ways where the title itself needs explanation, uh, but I violated that here. Uh, this is called aware, like a uh, space, where are you? So solitude is on everyone's mind. So here's uh, an older one about uh, when I had as much solitude as I knew what to do with, um, aware. If nothing in the woods around you moves, what do you hear? The blank page, the empty nightness, holds everything in what can be until you make a mark. I breathe in the scent of stillness, the lone dark, and joyously can't tell myself apart. The space between all moments, the, the slate of all next things, the peace of silenced waters awaiting the calligraphy of rings. When shadows cast and feet take steps in that breath will once more be a me until that motion comes to be. I embrace not being here to see. Uh, and of course, deserted streets, not just personal loneliness are themes of this here plague. So here's one of the many poems I've gotten out of Ohio. It's called Landlocked. We came to see the sights of the soundless town. A neon native chief watched over the street from a high crazy deco movie house marquee, closed like everywhere we went, the ways to a life that disappeared before he would, crossed paths with the only other soul we saw, ships passing at stilled summer midday, but looking back at each other to wonder why we came here and why she had stayed. Actually, she called out to ask where we were from, quizzical at the distance, returning our visitors' compliments with what enthusiasm she could echo, already too far apart to shake hands the emptiness of the avenue closing in around our parting waves. We were there to read the scene's own silent story. None of us made it into the poem. And finally, uh, it took me a long time to actually see a drone, um, kind of one of those new fashion doohickeys uh, that uh, came late to me, uh, like the very computer on which I'm telling you this, but. Uh, this is a poem that begins with that sighting and uh, takes place at a pro-immigrant march uh, through the streets and to the waterfalls of Patterson, New Jersey, about two weeks after uh, Trump was sworn in. And it's called Patterson Book Seven, which is really asking for it. Uh, Patterson Book Seven. I hadn't known the sound, a faint airborne waterfall roar, portable static from some radio's ghost, I followed people's waves to the floating dragonfly drone. Everybody smiled right at it, a flood of real faces to crash the stereotype. Staring down the birdie, sending the word, by mouth, like the free pigeons up a side street I mistook for cell phone pads. Retired from spying, now carrying and keeping no one's message but their own. 
nodding calmly way above the current of bodies no drone could tell apart, flowing uphill through the antique city streets to swell at the edge of the grand cliffside's cascade, streaming in from different worlds determined to be, determined to stay standing here. We'd kept moving, a pilgrimage in sneakers, strollers, turbans and prayer shawls, hoodies and hijabs, to the pulse of storefront speakers, chants and prayers from cantors and imams, past the higher floors of the fanciful facades, once chapels of industry, empty now, the heavens up for rent, but on this day the word was on the street. Gathered at the crest of the waters rolling down, to hear each other's voices over any sound, some flurries of the winter sky came to rest in our hands, drifting alike onto the towers and the ground. Nothing special, but each with a place at the lowest walks and brightest heights of everybody's land. Thanks all. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. So since uh, we, we had two two people who said they would come but did not manage to make it. Uh, you're, you're stuck with me <laughs> reading some an, an old poem, which I thought I didn't like, but now I reread and said, it's actually not so bad, um, which I wrote 19 years ago to this day. Um, I took a wonderful class with Patricia Carlin at the New School, uh, the, definitely the greatest poetry teacher I ever had. I learned from every single poem she taught from. She was a Shakespearean scholar as well as contemporary language poetry. Um, anyway, this was, uh, you know, just to be fully out there, this was an assignment where you had to take inspiration from a, a poet. And I, I chose Pound, Ezra Pound, these lines, love gone as lightning, enduring 5,000 years shall the comet cease moving or the great stars be tied in one place. That was my inspiration for this. And I wrote a poem to that stanza. Um, and it's interesting that there is a biblical slash eschatological theme today. Um, and also worth uh, saying, I don't come from fundamentalist religion. I, I come from, some, from uh, fundamentalist atheism, although I was always, uh, I guess, interested in mysticism from a very, very early age, um, oddly enough. So anyway, Enough explaining, show don't tell, right? So this is the poem with no title. Pieces of yellow sunshine block the sky. The rest is a nebulous blue and white. The shrill scent of your perfume wafts by and memory enters for a moment. My sense is dumbed by citrus. Yet I want to sing to this illusion that lacks the warmth my flesh craves. It is April and clouds of thunder bring love gone as lightning. Crepuscule on my fire escape, eating lettuce and cream soda. We stare at a toy city in the distance. You are wearing the denim jacket I gave you with glow in the dark stars. We hold hands as night appears. I hear sounds from the street as if they were in front of me. Two cars crash, a grinding of gears enduring 5,000 years. When I was young, my father planted a tree each for me then my brother, a pear tree for me, a cherry tree for him. It took quite a few years for them to bear fruit. They bring fruit every year and haven't stopped for over 20. Because the pear tree is blooming, shall the comet cease moving? I saw a constellation that reminded me of you. Extravagant curves and structure, but it is two-dimensional and moves without emotion unlike the muscles on your face that shift and pull in real time. It, is it any wonder that your beauty is in the shifting of elements in space or the great stars be tied in one place? So that's that. Um, and then actually lyrics from uh, songs that I wrote this past year. We had a um, sort of a songwriters workshop. Basically we would write to assignment. Um, it's a bunch of people, certainly people that Mary knows, um, you know, a pretty large group, maybe eight people. And it was great because everybody was um, very positive in their feedback, but, um, but also really, you know, gave really good critique. Uh, Chad Bourne was involved in that, Mary and Lane Steinberg, Dave Foster and uh, Mel Johnston, really a lot of good writers. So I, um, 
was very influenced by this cartoon, uh, Steven Universe. Um, the woman who writes these songs is just brilliant. And um, what I love is that I, I realized I had real uh, prejudices, you know, sort of perfectionist, terrible perfectionist streak that wouldn't allow myself to just write. You know, uh, I would compare everything to Chris Difford's lyrics or Elvis Costello. And so I was sort of stuck in this, uh, you know, I was not allowing myself to, uh, to just try simple ideas. Anyway, um, this is maybe untitled, maybe called Flowers, I'm not sure, but this is the lyric to the song. There's actually a song which I'll not sing right now, but uh, maybe another time. Flowers are alive. You can have the night sky to dance on because you can't tell me that I am yours to die with in this way. Hold me to the light and I am yours to die with in this time. Hold me to the light and I am yours to die with in this time. I'm so glad that I'm alive. I'm so glad that you're alive. I'm so glad that we're alive. I'm so glad that we're all alive. Flowers are alive and you can have the night sky to dance on because you can't tell me that I am yours to die with in this way. Hold me to the light and I am yours to die with in this time. Hold me to the light and I am yours to die with in this time. I'm so glad we're all alive. Uh, okay. And this was in the, uh, the assignment was to write a song about whatever using five. Uh, five fingers alive by your side. Everything you said is a lie. You could have died in my mind. My hands and feet were tied to the cross. You will find, you will find, you will find. Before I knew your face, before I knew your name, you were a shapeless flame. Extreme and scathing bright in my mind slides into night where angels can fly. The men and women strive to align. They try and try and try. Before I knew your face, before I knew your name, you were a shapeless flame. And this is a possible bridge. To see a world in a grain of sand, infinity in the palm of your hand, the owl that calls upon the night flies on and on and on. Before I knew your face, before I knew your name, you were a shapeless flame. So that that's all she wrote. <coughs> hey. So this was a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know all these people. Could you do a little intro of of, of Mary and Adam? Yeah. Sure. Uh, Mary Knapp, uh Mary how was it six years ago that we met? At least. At least six years ago. So I'm playing some gig at 2A, Tom Clark's treehouse thing, and Charlie Ross says to me, You gotta meet this girl. You know, you gotta meet her. So I took Mary's number and I said, hey, we're doing a session. And uh, she came down and uh, she delivered. And then I found out what she did, which uh, she's quite prolific as a writer and a performer. Um, and uh, we've collaborated on many, 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 many projects. And uh, she's probably the only person that uh, uh, Mike Fornatella, if you know Mike, would he said, he said, you know, we, we can't necessarily have Mary with, with our group because people, if she's not there, people always say, where's Mary? <laughs> so um, anyway, it's uh, incredible. Adam, uh, I met through Alexis Thomason, um, and we didn't really get to know each other. I mean, we just cordially met, but I didn't realize that Adam was a, a ridiculously good poet. Um, Adam, is this correct to say that you write text for graphic novels? Or yeah, I script graphic novels, yes. Mm -hmm. um, do, not, uh, do not illustrate. Do not illustrate, and I, I cannot talk about it, but I've seen a, a, a coming project which is absolutely awesome um, and uh, really good. And, and the one that is published that I've seen and have read, he did a uh, graphic novel, or, ser or at least had a story in, right? The yeah. AOC uh, graphic novel is a superhero which is absolutely amazing. Cool. And, and then Rose, I met through Jesse Krakow and Conchetta, right? Um, she's a wonderful, wonderful singer-songwriter. 
I knew was a polymath. Uh, so I, I knew that she wrote poetry. I didn't even have to ask her. A um, what? A poly what? A polymath. What's a polymath? It's somebody who does a lot of different stuff. Oh, I never heard that word. <laughs> I think that that's the right use of the word. Sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes I do that and then it's wrong. So, um, yeah, you know, and, and I think that this, for me, doing this was more two things. One, to put a fire under my own ass to start writing more words, you know. Um, and secondly, I think that, I mean, it's been really touching to me because this intimacy, this is sort of what's missing, I think, from a, my life, you know, is that performing connection with other people, you know. Um, and there have been a couple of these, and it's, it's been very interesting just to see certain performers connect with each other, you know, that didn't necessarily know each other before, and, you know, and it's, it's nice to be inspired, you know. Um, by the yeah, way, you, oh, you see different sides of, you see yeah. different sides of, you know, dimensions of people's creativity. Like, uh, it was fascinating how, Mary, how like wonderfully rhythmic, you know, your reading is. And, you know, I think it really uh, plays the role of the accordion and other accompaniment in, in, in much different ways. And to see this almost, you know, evangelical fire in your uh, delivery of it, uh, I didn't know that it could be as mad an experience as, you know, the full concert, but now I, now I know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm lyrically very challenged. Like, it's very hard for me to, to take in lyrics when I'm listening to the whole song and lyrics. And your stuff is also so, there's so much going on that, you know, I, I mean, I've played some of these songs with Mary, The Underbelly, I never knew the lyrics, really. Do you know? So it's nice hearing the lyrics by themselves, you know, because they stand up on their own, you know. But, so, Rose, you're, you're in the New York area too, or where are you beaming in from? I'm in Brooklyn. I grew up in the, the Midwest, but I'm in Brooklyn now for the last nine years. Yeah. Mm. No, I loved your stuff. It was uh, really, you're really upholding the bardic tradition single-handedly, I think, because, you know, the, uh, the, the weave between word and, and, and tune was, was really perfect and, you know, uh, well-timed. Um, and that wall song in particular, I hear a lot of Buffy St. Marie in that, you know, mm. uh, which is, for me, a high compliment. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Desert Island album for me, Illuminations, for sure. Oh, Illumin wow, yes. <laughs> if, any, if anybody else doesn't know, the, the actual first electronic rock album, I would say. So, yes. Mm. Yeah, my band actually did a cover, uh, one show where we covered the whole album and then we never did it again. It was really wow. fun. That's but familiar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you recorded some of those as songs, what you, what you performed as now? Yeah, it's interesting. I have. I have three full length albums. The third one is about to come out if I just uh, um, do a couple more things. <laughs> um, and, but I actually, um, the two sung pieces that I did today haven't been okay. recorded yet. Um, I really, it, I gotta say, I really enjoy, I've always enjoyed the question and the conversation about uh, the connection between poetry and song lyrics. Um, you know, obviously the idea is, oh yeah, well the, those go together, duh. Um, but for me, there's such different um, head spaces really. Yeah. Um, and I'm also really fascinated um, just by this moment in our culture, you know, just as Americans here where our status as workers is such a big part of our um, identity and where being an artist uh, can feel so selfish or whatever. Suddenly that now that everybody's, you know, even if they're not off work, they're not going to their jobs. I feel like a lot of people feel like they um, have sudden permission to almost to indulge themselves. And I was really fascinated by, um, you know, kind of be in, in love with the, the flood of online concerts. And yeah, this, you know, I haven't had a public identity as a poet in years. And this week is the second, the first of two poetry things. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And um, I hope to make more, more connections because I realized I, I miss that a lot. Yeah. I think also like along with that, um, 
I've been doing a songwriting class with, with a bunch of teens every Thursday. And I wanted to offer that to parents to give them a break, but also what I'm finding is a lot of educators are not necessarily engaging their students, you know, that they're sort of giving them stuff to videos to watch or whatever, but they're not really one-on-one -on -one collaborating because that's, I, I taught in a program which really was, was a new, was a new model, which is actually to write with kids as opposed to teach them or, or have them create and then say, okay, that's good. You know, this was much more about as a pro musician saying, okay, well, what about this as a verse, you know, or, you know, we can take this idea and how about this, you know? Um, and so, you know, we have three kids, uh, one who doesn't, you know, like they don't need necessarily need to play an instrument, but just even when I realized that a hook could be even bacon, egg and cheese, my friend Stephan, Stephanie Carlin did that for a song with like six year olds. I was like, oh my God, that's all you have to do. That's it, you know? And like, and it's, it's just amazing to watch these kids come alive. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's there, you know, I think like for me, I just use this phrase with students, when, once you have the buy-in, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, there's that real connection. That's, you know, and again, not for a religious person, but that, to me, like, that is a manifestation of a higher spirit, you know, that, that you know, that, that you can have this thing and it's, you know, and then, then they can own that thing that's in them much earlier. You know what I mean? That their voice is valid. Their ideas are valid. There's no, you don't have to grow up to be a songwriter. You are now, you know. So that's kind of cool. So we start the, the the latest song is about garbage the cat. Oh, you know. Right? Why not? That sounds amazing. It is. Well, maybe you should come and sit in. You know, it would be great. Uh, yeah, I've got a I've got a kid who might enjoy that too. I'll ask. Awesome. Her. Uh, is she, how old is she? Fourteen. She's twelve. Yeah. Well, she's, oh, she's, she's perfect. Good. She's perfect yeah. for that. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the info. Yeah, because the the kids are I think eleven or twelve and then 14, and I think 14 or 15. Perfect. And uh, yeah, because I think that there's, and it's also interesting just to hear how sometimes parents are so scared to do something wrong with their kids, like in terms of instruments and all this stuff, like, oh, they don't play an instrument. It's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, they can have ideas. It doesn't, you know. It's just, you know, Victor Wooten said, um, he said, you know, people say music is like a language. He said, no, it is a language. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, you know, and we begin by mimicking, you know, and, and that's it. I mean, babies, on, you know, Mary's baby is probably way ahead of the curve, but you know, like they, they, you know, they begin by doing this stuff right away. You know, like I remember my kid, she was listening to like Zanakis percussion stuff when she was one and, and digging it. So who knows, you know what I mean? You yeah, I still, I still get in my, my daughter does, has always done a lot of walking songs, basically, spontaneous walking songs from the mm -hmm. time she was really small. Mm -hmm. One time we were um, on a spontaneous vacation at Lake Winnipesaukee, which was like, a let, I can't take it anymore, let's go somewhere. And um, there was a sign on the boat launch about invasive plants and washing your boat to avoid spreading plants around. And she said, Mom, what's milfoil? I said, I don't know, let's look it up, it's a plant. And she, as we were walking back to our campground, she started going, mill foil, dum diddly dum, mill foil, dum diddly dum, mill foil, mill foil. And it still comes to me every once in a while when I'm walking, you know? So you're right, I like bacon, egg and cheese. Yeah, that's very risky. All you need is a I time. Love I love this a walking song, because that's so like, yeah, being in motion is, always a great inspiration for music like that's why i miss having a car because i would always like make up songs while driving it's built in <laughs> rhythm walking is even better if you're not afraid walking maybe it's good yeah right or even like um uh, uh june the, the guy who did amelie like like taking rhythms and then just you know writing words to whatever to the raindrops or the dishwasher or you know what i mean like Sometimes like hearing those rhythms, it's that, that can be very inspiring because it's not necessarily something that you expect or, or whatever, you know? One of my favorite things that I, I keep neurotically recording, uh, afraid the whole time that I'll break my phone and lose my connection to the outside world is our dripping bathtub into the bath water. It just makes this amazing loop. You know, I guess we're all at home paying attention to these things. <laughs> 
my new thing has been, um, I'm now working on my second video of play animals with, with my daughter, Betty. You know, I've, I have the animals sing, so I, I make up a little song, and then I, I sit down and I kind of add some harmony to it, and I'm trying to, you know, because it's not too quick or anything, but I'm just trying to, like, catch the, that's, like, that's the thing that's, like, fulfilling me artistically right now. Like, I don't really want to write song like, actual songs, but doing that is, like, really fun. Well, you know, it's kind of going back to homespun creativity, you know, like that quilt that's in back of you, Mary, you know, it's like, uh, there was a time when everyone was an artist. Uh, and not everybody necessarily knew that now everybody can know it because we're connected electronically. And uh, yeah, I mean, I always thought that the advent when people were worrying that, like, the advent of the internet would be the demise of live performance, I thought, well, no, we're just kind of going back to village media, as I thought of it, you know, like with wandering troubadours. Uh, and now we're, you know, back to uh, uh, whatever. We're all in our, like, madman and madwoman's cabin <laughs> making our art. But uh, but uh, everyone can, not, can hear it and see it. Mm. Yeah. It's really wonderful about this moment, for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. But there's something else I was thinking about. Oh, just, um, I, don't, I don't know why I'm bringing it up now specifically, but it makes me think when we did a, a tribute, Jesse Krakow did a, a tribute to the Shags. And oh, so it was great. The whole, the whole thing about the Shaker tradition of, um, that they would sort of tie these, you know, these sort of mono, like not, not like no harmonies, but just, just these, these sort of chants, you know, and uh, yeah, and, and I remember a friend of mine telling me that he visited, I don't know if it was Bali or somewhere, where that they create all this art, and then when they have too much of it, they throw it out. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I something I've been obsessed with for years, probably because of my own whatever uh, neurosis. But like the, this idea of the you know, art with a capital A, and like I'm an artist, you know, and and, and, and it's true, like everybody. Art is just a part of our expression, you know, like why does somebody, you know, deserve to make art? Do you know what I mean? Like that, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting thing of like, there is craft, but then there's also the sort of soul expression and there is no measure of that, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, I don't know. I, something I've always been just curious about that way, you know, like, yeah, and, and then, and then also the outsider art thing. It's like, well, you know, so if something is supposed to look like this thing, but it doesn't look like it, then is, you know, is it, you know, whatever, is it valid? You know, is it, is it, you know, I don't know. Is it, it's stuff I've always thought about, but. Well, it's valid because it's in your own language. You were talking about music being a language, but, uh, and so is art, but everybody has their own accent, so to speak. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone, has an imperative uh, to express it in their own way, uh, which is uh, why that, that's one thing I've felt about that mix of uh, music and, and speaking and your stuff, Rose, that, you know, it worked so well because each thing you did could only be expressed in the way it was. And, you know, that's always a good benchmark for <laughs> any artist, I think. Yeah, I feel like create, going back to what you were saying, Tom, I feel like art is something that's in our bodies, really. And I feel like there's, I think, a necessary, in fact, if you, if you actually want to make anything, um, a necessary separation between what you make and then what other people make of it. Um, but I think that what other people make of it enables it to live on for other people to experience. And I was actually thinking about you know, certain poets that you read and, and it says in the notes, oh, this, this is a song and the, the tune is gone. And that even, you know, to think about how amazing it would have been to hear that, that poets sing that during their lifetime, even without those pieces, it can still be so inspiring. So, you know, in a way I feel like, um, you know, we keep telling the same stories and it keeps kind of getting passed on you know, in this natural way. So maybe, even though I'm so obsessed with trying as, you know, this kind of librarian instinct of preserving everything for every mark that everyone makes, um, uh, and thinking of creativity as maybe the main way to leave a mark, 
at the same time, I love your story about them just throwing it away because we're going to make it again. You know, we're going to circle back to those, to those ideas. Like every baby really has it, you know, even just walking down the street. Yeah. And, and Babson has just joined us from New Orleans. This is Rose and Mary and hey, Adam. Rose. Yeah. Adam, I, how are you doing? And, and Mary, I know you. <laughs> You know me better than I know myself. I think at this point from reading the libretto that I'm working on with Mary and Tom. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Adam, Mary and uh, Rose, can, can we stay to hear Anne? Yeah. Yes, great. Yeah, sure. Great. Wait, I have a, a logistical question. It's Am okay. I like super late? I thought I was super early. No, no, uh, it was 10, 10 Eastern, but, but it's fine. But I, but I'm but so sorry. Totally I really thought I was logging in 15 minutes or so early. It's okay. It's fine. I, but this is, but we have the space for you. So this is good. Did well, you, did you bring something in particular? Because today, by the way, has been a lot of poems about divinity. Well, then I um, came prepared for that. Um, I would read uh, two poems that are related to music and divinity. Um, I, um, uh, this is my latest collection. It's called Messiah. And um, uh, again, I want to apologize for showing up so late. I really thought I was showing up early. No joke. Um, I got a grant years ago to go to Yaddo in, you know, Saratoga Springs um, to work on this project. I um, took Handel's Messiah Oratorio and tried to reimagine without changing the meaning of the scriptural passages that Handel uses for each of his songs in the choral work, uh, a, a work that was both a commentary on all those Bible passages set in the American landscape, but also... Uh, a commentary to some degree or another on American music. So I want to read to you two of those poems. Um, the first is, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm down south, so I'll say it like this. It's about the rapture. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's called... Um, the air, the trumpet shall sound, which is a direct title from one of the choral works of Handel. And it starts with uh, an epigraph uh, from uh, 1 Corinthians. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. When the horn blows, we will hear the crepe of chairs scraping on the linoleum, the bray of silver tray clattering against marble staircase, of ice chips chiming against the metal bar top, and of course, the sound of Ella's crooning to us like a siren on the rocks, beckoning us to rise. And we will leave our beaded bags hung on the fan backs, take a last sip of our cosmopolitans, and get out of our seats, make a beeline for the bandstand. When the horn blows, we will hear the scrap of the entire brass section, the scowl of Lewis's growling scat, or is it glossolalia? We will hear the slithering of snare sticks, the plump lumping of the big bass, the tinkling syncopation of the piano, and of course, the sound of one hand clapping, a finger crooked and wiggled, beckoning us to rise, and we will each grab the waist of the nearest smoldering, smiling one, the hand of the of the nearest handsome, winsome one and shuffle out on the pressed plywood polished platform. When the horn blows, we will hear the sl slaking snake oil, snake hips shake, ship sinking, loose lip licking, slicking, sticking, all melt into the maracas mosh, the guitar's gate, the xylophone's phone calls, the tom-tom, tom-tom, blood and tom-tom of jeans, gongs, and of course the sound of the MC's requested drum roll please suspense suspended in the clarinet's amber trills beckoning us to rise and we will bop strut spin 
trip the alarm, spin on the rip cord, and lift each other up like pair skaters figuring future fractals. When the horn blows, we will hear the chandelier buckle under the weight of the fat lady singing, swinging, ring clinging, the ballroom columns festooned with the tunes limpid lagooning, burning down like church candles. Guys, countdown to the new birth. Five, four, three, two, one. And of course, the mirrored ball dropping like a sugar cube in Spumante poured out to fit our departure. It's refraction shooting descent above us beckoning us to rise and when the horn blows we will float up on its divine sonority a red carpet rolled out for the parade upward the swing swung swimmingly by the sultan of swat our moon glowing big bang uh blower will knock us the melded orb of jitterbuggers ascending on a copper coated note held by the virtuoso for many measures toward the bleachers above the back fence and out of the park and um the second one thank you uh the second one i won a prize for i turned the hallelujah chorus into a southern rock anthem set again in the american landscape because you know I am ridiculously now considered a Southern writer. Like I've won a prize from the Southern Writers Southern Writing Conference. And I am not from the South, but you know, I apparently am now. Anyway, this is called Chorus Hallelujah. Um, I'll give you the, the, um, the several epigraphs and then just dive in. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. All of that's from Revelation. The banger bouncers, the Trenton tree trimmers heard it, the Wellfleet welders, the Boise blank bank clerks heard it, the Prudhoe paratroopers, the Ashland stagehands, they threw the file in the air, the scissors clattered, the Montpelier pet walkers, Birmingham hired hands, the Tulsa muscle men and the Hilo housewives, the Eureka speakers and the Jackson taxmen, they opened the gate and let the horses run loose, the Butte beauticians, Tabika tobacconists, Redmond cryptographers, tombstone stenographers, St. Paul paleontologists, Fort Worth workers, they ripped off the polyurethane gloves and squealed. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. The Reno receptionists, Hope Interlopers, Milwaukee Turnkeys, Ann Arbor Anthologists, Florissant Florists, Chicago Chicken Pluckers, they hugged the guests goodbye. They sniffed back a few tears. Toledo Repo Men, Lynchburger Burger Flippers, Wheeling Dealers, the Mino Mink, Mink Ranchers heard it, Baton Rouge Boatmen, Athens mathematicians, they fainted, opened eyes, wandered around blinking. Biloxi boxers, Lexington lexicographers, the Taos taco chefs, and the Denver drivers, the Omaha orthodontists, Terre Haute poets, they discarded the shovel, they jumped in the lake. He rules, we rule, he reigns, we reign, he rocks, we rock. The Brooklyn crooks, Philadelphia deli clerks, the Concord cartographers, Providence provosts, the Hartford heart surgeons, the Annapolis pollsters, they cover their mouths and they forgave their mothers. The Sioux Falls Sioux alterers, Daytona tailors, the Charleston harlots, Chapel Hill chaplains heard it, the Arlington arms dealers, the Dover gophers, they wailed to the Batmobile. They spat on the floor. They sped down routes one and 66, down the Prairie Parkway and Adventureland Drive, down Old Corn Avenue and Interstate 70, down Kellogg Boulevard and South Lewis Avenue. He rules, we rule, he reigns, we reign, he rocks, 
we rock down Black Stockyard Road and University Street, Lake Drive, New Jerusalem Curve, Clinton Lane, across Brewery Avenues and Colgate Court, across Gun Beach Road and up Plaza de Armas, up the Dalton Highway and Waimea Way, across Shasta Avenue and Siskiyou Road, Microsoft Campus Drive and around Fremont Street, down 9th, 4th, and 1st Streets, up Hondo Seca Road, across the Alameda de las Pulgas Detour, up Appalachian Way, and the Temple Boulevard, a right at Whippoorwill Lane, at Cedar Junction, at New Heritage Court, at Tucson Avenue. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. A left at Crazy Horse Way and Cahaba Drive at Cherokee Street and Kissimmee Boulevard, along Sacagawea Curve and Dixie Lane. They went straight at Reckoning and Righteousness Streets and at Cemetery Avenue, they picked up hitchhikers. They drove down Lenape and Navy Streets. They kept going at Pembroke Road, at Madison and DeKalb and Park and Amsterdam Avenues, and on Providence Road and Wilshire Boulevard. And they arrived ready, if a bit out of breath, for as it is written, we shall meet him in Bel Air. At the unnamed arena they had only just constructed. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. And with them arrived every beauty queen, every miss in America. Miss Bolly, Bowling Ball Tahoe, Miss Calzone October, Miss Amish Cookie Dough, Miss Greeting Card Week, Miss Power Tool Washington, Miss Rose Parade, Miss Teenage Plastic Packaging, Miss Suntan Oil Bikini, Miss Artichoke Bliss. And they all wore their sashes and tiara, but in the place of bouquets, they carried stormproof high beam flashlights coordinated with their ball gowns. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. And as they checked their batteries, a bright bevy of white-clad pizza delivery men descended from the sky, bearing boxes with sectioned halos. A gaggle of white-clad Avon ladies alit, toting satchels overflowing with frankincense. A truckload of white-clad firefighters descended, brandishing double-edged hatchets between their teeth. A keystone full of white-clad peace officers knocked, brandishing sharpened plowshares and Elvis rhinestones, an administrative assistance fantasy full of white-clad international couriers landed asking for signatures on Dead Sea Scrolls. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. While, the, while these descended, this doorbell ringing army of the sky in white linen and they brought out the blonde, long-haired MC from Woodstock, not a day older than he was in 1969. And he yelled for us one more time, the truest of hippie truths. We must be in heaven, man. We must be in heaven. For surely this company was not from our state. And the penitent American roadsters cheered, He rules, we rule, he reigns, we reign, he rocks, we rock. And then, out of the smoke of the glass seen darkly, he popped a wheelie to see us all face to face. And then out of his airy, in the highest height, he floored it to reunite with his family. And then keeping the appointment jotted in blood, he rumbled in at the right hour on the right day. And then out of the seventh seal broken open, he thundered in rupturing what came before him. He rules, we rule, he reigns, we reign, he rocks, we rock appearing on the crest of the Los Angeles smog on a white chromed up soup up Har Harley Davidson. He motored crossed in our magnificent stuntman emblazoned on the back of his jacket in flame shun a fish with quarters in its mouth and the words king of kings for his coronation coronates and the words up his white leather chaps and crimson Lord of Lords, for his household's mansions within it. And with a most holy revving, he descended, revelation prophesied. And in front of the misses, all of them, he descended, dipping the kickstand in front of Miss Artichoke Bliss, for only she kept 
fresh batteries for her lamp, now the only one lit, and at her peau de soie high heels, he bowed his knee, a proposal gesture. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. She declared, stammering, losing her spokesmodel composure momentarily. I, I would rather be baptized by you, sir. Why do you come to me? And the wildest Harley rider told her only, suffer it to be so now. Miss Artichoke Bliss placed her own tiara on his full head of hair and a lone American bald eagle, piercing the hush with its plaintive endangered cry, swooped down, ready to taste the flesh of evil dictators barbecued like the rats it chases in the rocks, circled to land on his superlative shoulder, and a voice from above thundered the commandment, revolution today, then Eden tomorrow. And the great Harley Rider rose again, we knelt. The earth was silent, but for his footsteps, crowned as he was, this time not with thorns, but with allegiance. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. The age of tears, of neuroses, of breakage, of damage, of mismanagement, of exploiting, of sniveling, of groveling, of graft, of growling, of howling, of weeping, of creeping, of sleeping. He rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock. Is now over forever. And we are champions, now friends, now ticket holders, now frisk admitted, now shareholders, now valued customers, now heirs, now buckaroos, now beetle maniacs, now blessed, now barkeeps, now backstage group. Now VIPs, now iCats, now Nick City Pretty Dancers, now Slick Kickstand Kicking Biker Chicks. No longer the pockmarked. We are now rockers, now rockers, now rockers, because he rules, we rule. He reigns, we reign. He rocks, we rock, because we must be in heaven, man. We must be in heaven. So that's what I do when I'm not talking on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs>